Whether you are a beginner or someone with some experience in cryptocurrencies, you have probably heard of the term proof of work. It is the mechanism used by Bitcoin, which is the largest cryptocurrency in the world right now. In this video, you will understand what is the proof of work mechanism, how exactly it works, why it is still used by a lot of cryptocurrencies, and finally, some of its drawbacks. So, let's get started. First, what is proof of work? The proof of work is a consensus mechanism used by the Bitcoin's blockchain. You now might be wondering, what is a consensus mechanism? Let's first break it down. The word consensus means the majority agreeing on something, and the mechanism is the way or method to reach this majority agreement. So why do we need a consensus mechanism for a cryptocurrency in any centralized system, like banks for example? The transaction's data of its customers are stored on the bank's databases only, and the bank administrators are the one with the authority to add, delete, and update any data from these databases to maintain genuine records. On the other hand, you may know that the Bitcoin is based on the blockchain technology, which is basically a distributed ledger of transactions, meaning that each computer on the network has a copy of the Bitcoin transactions ledger, which makes the blockchain a decentralized system with no one authority controlling it and no one participant can add or verify faulty transactions, as all other participants will simply refuse it. In this self-regulatory system, all the participants are responsible for verifying new transactions and maintaining genuine transactions data. And from there comes the need for a consensus mechanism to make sure that all participating computers on the network reach an agreement on the transactions verified and added to the blockchain and on the overall status of the ledger. If you still don't understand why the blockchain needs a consensus mechanism, you need to imagine this scenario. Taylor wants to buy a product from Rebecca and will pay in crypto. Currently, he has 0.25 Bitcoin. So, Taylor issues a transaction to send Rebecca her money. And after Rebecca ships the product to him, he issues another transaction to send the same amount of Bitcoin to Oliver, who then ships another product to Taylor. Let's say that the two transactions were entered into two different blocks. Transaction 1 was entered into block A, and transaction 2 was entered into block B, and the two blocks were created at the same time. To prevent double spending of currency, only one block of transactions will be added and the other transactions will be unverified until they are added to another block. So how can the network achieve consensus on which block to add to the blockchain and which block to cancel? And here is where the proof of work comes into play as a consensus mechanism for the blockchain network. But how exactly does the proof of work decide which block to add to the blockchain? The proof of work powers a lot of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Monero. To understand how the proof of work achieves consensus, we will continue with the previous example. First, we can depend on the time at which the blocks arrive to the computers on the network, as both of them may arrive at different times at different computers on the network. So the proof of work solution is that each new block that gets added to the blockchain needs to include the solution of a mathematical problem called hash function or hash algorithm. Bitcoin blockchain uses the SHA-256 algorithm. If you input any data, no matter its length or size into a hash function, it will always generate a hash with a fixed length. Any slight modification in the input data will result in an entirely different hash. You can see that in our example here. No matter the length of the words, it will always generate a hash with a fixed length and any modification will change the hash. The computers on the blockchain network need to input the following data into the hash algorithm. First, the hash of the previous block, all transactions data, and finally a random guess number called the nonce, and then they generate the hash of the new block. This hash needs to meet certain requirements. Typically, it need to be below the target hash. If it is below the target hash, the block is accepted and added to the blockchain. If it doesn't meet the requirements, the computers need to try again with a different nonce many times until they get a correct hash. So returning to our example, let's say that the computers on the network solve the hash of block B first, this block will then be confirmed and added to the blockchain. 
the first computer who solves the hash of a block broadcasts his solution to the network. After that, this computer gets rewarded by Bitcoin and adds his block of transactions to the blockchain. This process is called mining, which is how new Bitcoins are issued to the market. On the other hand, the transactions of block A go back to the pool of unverified transactions and will be added to another block later. In this case, Oliver will get his money. And when the network try to verify the transaction again for Rebecca, it will fail as Taylor has already spent his money. You now might be wondering, what will happen if two blocks got solved at the same time? Although it is pretty rare to happen due to the difficulty of the target hash. But theoretically, it can happen. Different computers may receive the two blocks at different times, which makes block A the last block for some computers and block B the last block for the other computers. Then the race for the next block solving starts again, with each computer building on the block they first received as the last block in the blockchain. After a while, a computer on the network will solve the next block, which we call block N, and this computer will broadcast it to other computers on the network. When they receive the new salt block, they add it to their blockchain and continue building on it, as it is the longest chain, and the network always switch to the longest chain. After that, any transactions in the shorter chain will be cancelled and moved back to the pool of unverified transactions, which makes the end of the blockchain the most vulnerable part for attacks by hackers. Let's see this example. If Rebecca sold another product to another fraudster named James, Rebecca learned from her mistake this time, and she waits for the transaction to get confirmed before shipping the product. However, if James succeeded alone in generating another longer branch of the blockchain in which he sends the money to himself, the computers will always switch to the longer blockchain, and Rebecca's money will be gone again. However, for this to work, James need to solve the next block and generate the longer blockchain faster than all other computers on the network, which is in reality very unlikely even if he used an entire room full of computers and mining equipment as his chance will be really small compared to the entire network of computers. For James to succeed in verifying his fraudulent transactions, he will need to control 51% of all the computing power on the network, which will cost him billions of dollars in hardware. This type of attack is called the 51% attack. The 51% attack is very unlikely to happen for Bitcoin, for example. However, some smaller cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin Gold were attacked with it back in 2018, where the attackers succeeded in stealing more than $18 million. So, it is usually recommended to wait for six blocks confirmations before considering any crypto payment final to avoid the cancellation of the transaction in the future, as older transactions are more secure than newer ones in the blockchain. Now, we are going to talk about the advantages of using the proof of work as a consensus mechanism. The most obvious feature of the proof of work is its security, as it is very hard to validate fraudulent transactions on the blockchain, as the hackers will need to take control over 51% of the network, which makes it very resilient to attacks. Another advantage of the proof of work is that anyone can start validating transactions and earn money doing so. Unlike the proof of state, for example, which requires you to have a stake in the cryptocurrency to be able to validate transactions on its network. We will cover the proof of stake in an upcoming video. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it. When it comes to the problems of the proof of work, we have the biggest problem here, which the power and electricity needed for it to work. A study by Cambridge University stated that the Bitcoin alone uses electricity annually more than the whole Argentina country. And as the difficulty of mining increases, it will use more electricity in the future, which is very bad for the environment in the long term. Another disadvantage of proof of work is its scalability. The amount of power and electricity used now by proof of work is very large. What will happen if a project like Bitcoin was scaled to a worldwide level and Bitcoin was used to make everyday payments? The amount of electricity and power needed to keep the blockchain secure will be insane. Other than that, the transaction fees will be very high. Some developers propose that we make each block larger so that we can validate a bigger number of transactions. At the end of this video, we hope that you learned what you need to know about the proof of work mechanism. And if you liked our video, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel 
so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.